Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah and on this channel, I post a lot of anti-MLM content. So as always at the beginning of my video, I link a playlist here and in the description box below. This is my big anti-MLM playlist. This I think will be the 160th video on it. So much content over there if this is something you're really into binge watching. Also, if you're new here, I have a cat. His name is Zeke. I have two cats, but Zeke is the noisy one. Yes, and he's been wanting to play fetch all morning, and I have been playing fetch all morning. I thought an hour of fetch before filming this video would get it out of his system, but it has not. I know, I'm sorry. Oftentimes you'll see him in my videos or at least hear him chirping in the background. I think he's gonna settle down and take a nap though. Anyway, today's video is an MLM horror stories video. These are the personal experiences that people have had with MLM companies. They write out those experiences, they send them to me and I read them for a video. If at any point you have your own story you wanna send in, don't hesitate to send it my way. I would love to read it. The instructions for how to do that are also in the description box below. And I think that's all the intro stuff. So let's get into these stories today. This story says, hi Hannah, my name is blank, but I would like to remain anonymous. I recently found your page because of Jessica Hickson and I couldn't resist binging your videos, especially the MLM horror story ones. I have quite a few stories that I could share and maybe I'll send them in the future, but the one that disgusts me the most is my encounter with Herbalife. I grew up in a town that housed a medium sized university throughout the downtown area. Because of the college, there were some cool shops that always opened up around downtown. When I was a junior in high school, my town got our first Herbalife new nutrition club. One of my coworkers introduced me to the club and it was honestly one of the most fun places in town. Everyone was high energy and super nice, not to mention they always had fun music in the background, which just elevated the vibe of the place. I even loved the protein shakes. And since I didn't really eat meat, I thought it would be a great way to get some extra protein in my diet. From then on, I always tried to head to the club whenever I had extra money for the shake, tea, and aloe. After I entered college and began regularly going for a while, the owner told me that I could make shakes at home. I I was super excited since I figured that it would save me some money. She said that she would be my fitness slash nutrition coach and help me lose the weight I wanted to drop. I had always been self-conscious about my body and I loved the shakes, so I agreed and I became a preferred customer. I read ahead a little bit right here and I do wanna put a disclaimer or a trigger warning. There is talk about calorie restriction and dieting, so just heads up about that. For the first month or so, I actually did a really good job drinking the shakes and staying within the calorie amount she set for me, which was no more more than 1200 calories. Looking back, I know this is just insane, but I was around 20 years old and desperate, so I didn't question it. Zeke, you're being very loud, buddy. You're being so loud. Yeah, for the record, like 1200 calories. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. <laughs> Did you see? Zeke. <laughs> buddy. I'm trying that tactic where I just keep reading, ignore him, hopefully he'll settle down. Oh my gosh, that was so funny though. Wow, okay, back to the story. As I was saying, I'm not a professional in this field, but just seeing the number 1200 calories feels like nothingness, especially for someone in their young 20s. I mean, personally, I know that if I tried to function off of that many calories with my body, I would feel weak, tired, dizzy, foggy brained, like that feels really, really restrictive to me personally. Unfortunately, like all fad diets, I started eating more because I was just feeling so hungry and I started missing the act of eating food rather than just drinking it. This meant that I was gaining back the weight that I had lost. My coach would get upset when I would eat more than 1200 calories. Like even if I ate 1400, that was unacceptable to her. She asked me what was going on and I shared that my parents had bought pretzels and I had been snacking on them more. But before I left check-in that day, my coach told me not to eat those pretzels anymore. Yeah, we're entering even more dangerous territory here in my opinion, where we are demonizing the difference of 200 calories worth of pretzels in a day. I feel like that kind of outlook or attitude towards food puts you in a really dangerous spot mentally. And I feel like any professional in the field of nutrition, like a registered dietitian or something would probably agree with that, that this is a really slippery slope when you start heavily restricting your intake and you start looking at food just by their calorie numbers and you're being shamed for consuming 1400 calories in a day versus 1200. And this kind of speaks to the fact that this Herbalife coach 
isn't probably a professional, <laughs> probably doesn't have any expertise or background in this field and is not in a position to be giving you this kind of advice. As one can predict, I still wasn't losing weight. My depression was starting to pick back up due to some problems between my parents and me, and I wasn't in the headspace to keep doing this insane diet. At our next check-in, I got weighed, and when we sat down, my coach looked so disappointed. The first thing that came out of her mouth was something along the lines of, quote, you were really eating those pretzels this past week. I was horrified. It was soon after that meeting that I started ghosting her and avoiding the club. I still liked the shakes though, so although I was no longer a preferred member, I would still go to some of the other local nutrition clubs. It took about a year before I stepped into that original club that my coach still owned. Luckily, she never brought up our failed coaching relationship. Looking back on it all now three years later, having her be my coach was crazy. I thought that she had some expertise in her field since she had a wellness club, but honestly, with the diet that she had me go on, I think that she knew very little about actual health. She was just pushing out the script that the company sent everyone. I even saw this happen during fitness challenges they would host. Everyone was told to do the same things in order to get the quick results they were looking for. The only difference depended on if you were a male or female, as that would impact the calories and protein you were to consume. That is not an effective way to sustainably lose weight, and it fueled feelings feelings of shame and self-hatred that I had to deal with for a very long time. This past month, January of 23, I officially stopped going to any nutrition clubs. Even though the shakes are yummy, I don't want to put any support behind this company and its unhealthy business tactics. I was an insecure 20-year-old who needed professional help to work through my disordered eating habits. What I didn't need was a company to shame me and take advantage of my desperation. In case you're curious, I have gotten the help that I needed. I'm currently working with an actual fitness and nutrition coach who has gone to school, met me where I'm at, and helps me reach my goals in a sustainable way. My relationship with food has been healed in so many ways, and I now understand that I don't have to be a certain weight to be happy. There's more I could get into, but I think this is enough for now. I know everyone says this, but I'm truly thankful that you're reading this and spreading awareness about these horrible business models. Maybe another 20-something out there can learn something from my experience and avoid the pitfalls of nutrition clubs. I think you hit the nail on the head that this coach, somebody who's able to call themselves a coach and open up a nutrition club or a wellness shop or whatever, likely has no expertise or background or knowledge on this actual subject. And that's a hugely dangerous component of MLM companies is that in the case of Herbalife, anybody can join. You don't have to go through any training or have any kind of qualifications. There's no application process or vetting process. Anybody can sign up and call themselves a coach and open up a nutrition club. And for people who don't know any better and who aren't familiar with this business model and with Herbalife Nutrition Clubs, they might not know that those are not legitimate titles. And therefore they might, like in your case, take the advice of that person who's not a professional, who just is able to call themselves a coach because they joined Herbalife. I think we can all see how that's really problematic and how recommending that young females only consume 1200 calories a day if they're gonna wanna lose weight is really poor advice. And I'm thrilled to hear that now you actually are working with a professional. And if you do have health and wellness and fitness goals, I would always recommend that people get an actual professional to help them. Ideally, somebody who takes into account your personal needs and preferences and doesn't just give you this blanket recommendation. And that sounds like the kind of person you're working with now. So I'm really happy to hear that. Thank you for writing in this story and for reminding us that people who join MLMs are usually not professionals. And the advice they give is usually not very very good and it's all in the interest of trying to sell you a product. This story says, hi Hannah, my name is Anna, you can use my name, and I'm a new subscriber to your channel. I love your kind, compassionate approach to MLMs and the poor huns that are trapped in them. Please don't ever change. I grew up in MLMs, often going to parties and my mom buying from them, and for a short while my mom sold Zepter pots and pans. Never heard of that company before. They're very expensive, but my mom has had them for over 20 years and they've held up all these years. And for five seconds, I was an Avon rep in 2005 and also a Beachbody coach in 2014. Thankfully, I was able to leave both of those companies without losing much money and fortunately, no horror stories with either company. But I've never supported any MLM companies since then and I've never received a hey hun message on Facebook. I thought I was one of the few lucky people in this world. Nope. After watching many of your MLM horror stories, 
Mary's videos, I realized that I was actually approached by a couple at Target and it was such a weird and creepy experience that I almost blocked it out of my memory completely. This happened in September of 2020 during the height of the pandemic. I was in Target with my six month old son at the time trying to buy diapers, baby formula and wipes. I'm always aware of my surroundings, but was even more so since I was a new mom. I noticed a maskless couple, masks were mandatory in my state at the time, was kind of following me around and whispering to themselves and I started to worry. I quickly grabbed what I needed and started to head to the front of the store to check out. That's when the woman came up to me and said, oh my goodness, your baby is so cute. How old is he? I really didn't say anything because I felt so uncomfortable and I didn't want to give out any kind of information on my son. I asked her what she wanted and that's when her husband approached and he said, I'm sorry if we made you feel uncomfortable, but we wanted to talk to you about an opportunity for a mentorship program we only offer to certain people and we know you'd be a great fit for it. If somebody approaches you in Target and says, just based on the looks of you, I know you'd be great at this opportunity. How sketchy is that? You know nothing about this person just because you see a young woman, a young mom with a young baby. That to you reads like ding, 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 perfect candidate for my pyramid scheme. That is so messed up. That tells you exactly the type of demographic that they are trying to target for these schemes. I still had no idea what was going on and why these people had me cornered in the diaper aisle, but I began to panic. Like most people during the pandemic, I watched a lot of TV and I watched a lot of true crime and I thought, this is it. These people are gonna try and kidnap me and my child and will be sold off on the black market. Like I said, I began to panic. As I'm trying to make sense of what the hell is happening, the woman tries to touch my child's face. Who even does that? But especially during a pandemic. Keep in mind, the guy is still going on about this opportunity and mentorship program, but I'm not listening to him. I told them both that if they don't leave us alone right this second, I would start screaming at the top of my lungs in the middle of Target. They quickly apologized and left. I ran to the checkout and the cashier noticed that I was very shaken up and almost in tears. I asked her if I could get someone to walk me to my car and stay there while I loaded my son into the car. And she said that that was not a big deal. When I checked out, two employees walked me to my car and stayed with me the whole time. I will never forget the look of concern on their faces. And I briefly explained what happened to me in the baby section. And one of the employees was so worried for me that she asked that I text her when I got home safely. And I did. I will never forget this person for as long as I live. That's really thoughtful and sweet of that employee. I told my husband what happened to me when we got home and he was so upset that he wanted to file a police report. After this incident and being in lockdown, I kind of stopped going out in public completely for a while and I began to block out this incident. After watching your videos almost two years later, I realized that this couple was trying to get me to sign up with Amway. What a bunch of creepers. I thought for sure they were or something. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that phrase. I don't know if that's going to flag this video for something inappropriate. So I'll just say HT and you can see on the screen what that means. Looking back now, I don't know why I reacted the way I did because I'm a very cool, calm, and logical person. And I very rarely react the way I did in public, but I will not apologize for my reaction either. Maybe because it was the pandemic, I was a new mom and everyone was already slightly panicked already. Or I would like to think that it was my gut telling me to get out of the situation ASAP. I knew MLMs were shady, scammy, and predatory, but I think Amway reps are probably one of the worst. I can look back at my Target incident and laugh, but I'm still very aware of my surroundings, especially at Target. I apologize if my story isn't well written as English is my second language, but thank you for your very educational and informative videos. And please don't stop educating the masses on how awful MLMs truly are. Sending you, your kitties, and sweet baby lots of love. Oh my goodness, this is crazy because I kind of feel like you are one of the rare instances of people like taking action in that moment and being like, look, if you don't get out of my face, I'm going to scream. <laughs> And I think we should all take a page from your book here. Easier said than done. I'm personally not the type of person to be very forthcoming or confrontational or blunt like that. Even reacting in this way would feel really unnatural to me, but I completely see where you're coming from, where thinking about an MLM pitch is not the first thing that comes to mind in this situation. You genuinely thought 
you were in danger and this was a much more serious situation. And that's fine. Listen to your gut in those situations. Absolutely. Better safe than sorry. I say this all the time, but if you think you're in real danger or you feel cornered or pressured to do something you're not comfortable with, be rude, be upfront, be blunt about it. And I'm saying these things out loud because I need to take this advice for myself too. I need to hear this too. And I really just commend how with it you were in this moment to be like, what do you want? Get away from me. I'm going to scream. You're asking for help from the employees, which remember you can always do. Retail employees are more than happy to help you if you feel uncomfortable in that kind of situation. If you feel like you're being watched or stalked or like someone's going to follow you out of the store to your car. Like I said, better safe than sorry. Ask for someone to walk you out. There is no shame in doing that, especially as a young woman with a young baby. And it's sick to even think about that that, but terrible things happen and you need to be safe and protect yourself and listen to those red flags. I myself am also a lover of true crime, but I've heard of some absolutely horrendous stories of some truly terrible things that can happen to mothers and babies in vulnerable situations. Like you're in a parking lot of a store and you're distracted and you're getting them loaded into the car and you turn your back for a second and your baby's gone. Like it's, it's horrible. Okay. So anyway, I love your story for that lesson alone. This can be applied to far more than just MLMs, right? In this case, in hindsight, you're thinking it was an Amway pitch, but just in general, I think your story is so valuable to be aware of your surroundings, stand up for yourself, be rude about it if you have to, ask for help, make other people aware of that situation and how uncomfortable you are. All of those things are okay in the name of safety. And to wrap up your story, I also do want to confirm that I also believe this was probably an Amway pitch, specifically because it was a woman and man duo. Very common in Amway pitches to have a pair of people, specifically a couple. Amway loves to recruit couples and the fact that they use the language of mentorship. That's another thing that Amway really promotes. Like we will be your mentors or let me introduce you to my mentor. And just giving the timing of this whole thing and the fact that it was 2020, the height of the pandemic, MLMs are running wild. People are being sucked into these things like nobody's business. Everybody wants to work from home business opportunity. All of these details do add up to make it seem like this was most likely an Amway pitch. I'm almost positive that it was based on the details you provided. But thank you so much for sending in this story because there are lots of valuable lessons to be learned here. This one says, hi, Hannah. I, as many others that submit their stories, have found your channel and begun binging your content. I follow a few anti-MLM creators, but I've never seen anyone invite their audience to share. So thank you for this real opportunity. Of course. Thank you for submitting a story. I love it. I've been listening to your videos for about two weeks now, and I haven't yet heard you, your submissions, or other creators mention this MLM. So I'm so excited to tell you about my experience. Also, this happened a little over six months ago. This is going to be long as I'm very detailed, so please feel free to shorthand some of my story to make it more digestible. But here is my story with the MLM ID Life. You are right. I have never actually even heard of ID Life. How is that possible? I've been making these videos for 14 months, 15 months now. It's just crazy. There's so many companies out there. It's almost impossible to keep track of them all. So if you have a story from a company that we don't commonly talk about, I love to hear that so that we can give those different companies this kind of platform and hopefully spread the word further about them. So I was actually pitched this MLM at my job, which I would have never expected since I'm a 27 year old female barber. I work in a barber shop and I greatly enjoy doing men's hair and beards. I was a cosmetologist doing women hair, but I decided to flip to the other side of the field because honestly, I just get along with guys better. I'm huge into sports, especially hockey. This is important to my story. One day I was working at the shop and I had a guy walk in. He looked familiar for some reason, but I couldn't put my finger on it. I was ready. So I called back this gentleman. He was about in his forties and I began chatting with him. I do want to mention that I have many tattoos, one on my neck being my diehard favorite NHL team logo. I went through the common niceties. How's your day? going? How was your weekend? And so on. And once we got through the small talk, I like to ask a few questions until I can find a common subject to chat about. I was working on his right side, which meant that my NHL tattoo on my neck was visible to my client in the mirror as I was cutting his hair. He asked if the tattoo was what he thought it was. And I excitedly said, yes, hockey is my favorite sport in the world. I went to my first hockey game at three months old. So it's been a staple in my life. And I'm always ecstatic to talk about my team and show off my knowledge when I get a chance. 
Then my client, let's call him Joe, asked how much I follow the team. I told him that I could name every player just by their number and I know the stats of the team's top players as I watch every game. Joe was very impressed with my knowledge and then he shared that he actually played on my favorite team in the early 2000s for a few seasons. That was why I recognized him. I was absolutely floored. I've gotten the chance to meet other players in the past through previous jobs, family, and friends, so I was happy to add another name to the list. Joe used his celebrity effect to his advantage. I admit that I asked for his autograph and I still have it and I don't plan on tossing it regardless of the fact that he tried to rope me into his MLM. Oh Lord. Professional hockey player turned MLM bro. There's a first for everything, I suppose. Now we get into the juicy parts. Towards the end of his haircut, he mentioned that I looked fit, like I exercised and take care of myself. I'm tall and thin, but I don't exercise. I'm only thin because being a barber in a very busy store, I hardly ever get to take a lunch break. So I normally only get to have breakfast and dinner on the days that I work and my job is physically demanding. I was honest and told him what I just discussed and he took that as I could use some help filling in the missing lunch with ID Life products. They are a nutrition-based MLM. They have shakes, sleep strips, like the Listerine breath strips from back in the day, vitamins, and many other products. Why am I not surprised that this is just another supplement MLM? It's gotta be the most common product that MLMs sell, right? It feels like there's so many health and wellness supplement MLM companies out there because the product itself and the claims you can make about that product are so versatile. They can apply to everyone and any kind of health condition and any kind of need they have. In my opinion, those claims are sketchy and they're gimmicky and they're not proven and you shouldn't trust them. However, I feel like health and wellness MLMs are so popular because you can pretty much pitch them to anybody and you have endless vulnerabilities to tap into with people to convince them that they need whatever magic pill you're selling. All that to say that I've never heard of ID Life before, but I am not in the least bit surprised that they're a supplement MLM. I wasn't familiar with what an MLM was at the time, but I just knew something didn't sound right when he told me his pitch. He said that it would help improve my energy levels so that I wouldn't have to drink coffee anymore, that it would provide me with any missing nutrients, that it was customized just for me, and that I could easily make an extra $2,000 a month if I wanted to join as a representative for the company. He told me I would just have to put in six hours a week and talk to my clientele about the company and products. That's a conflict of interest within the company I work for. We're not allowed to talk about other businesses while on the company's time as it's unprofessional, which is what gave me the off feeling. I really don't love these concrete figures that he's giving you that you can make an extra $2,000 a month if you just want to work six hours a week. It is so explicitly misleading because the business opportunity guarantees you nothing at all. There's no payroll. There's no wages. You're not clocking in and clocking out. There's nothing out there to say that if you put in six hours a week that you're going to get $2,000 a month from it. That is an explicit income claim. If I've ever seen one that is not allowed. He can't be promising you that you're going to make that much because there are no guarantees guarantees in an MLM. Joe gave me his phone number and told me to reach out if I was interested in learning more. I sat with what he said for a few days and the curiosity got the best of me, so I reached out to him. That's when he started to actively try to recruit me. He would text me constantly asking for a good time to talk on the phone. I'm not very good at saying no, so I kept caving. One phone call was just with him. Then the next one, he had his partner on the call with him telling me how much these products changed their lives. These phone calls would be a minute minimum of 45 minutes, no matter how many times I would try to get off, they would just talk over me and continue their pitch. Joe sent me a link to take the ID Life quiz, which asks a lot of personal questions about your diet, health issues, family health, and medications I'm taking in order to create a quote, customized perfect health bundle of many products based off of my answers. I reluctantly did the quiz, and as soon as I finished, within minutes, Joe was calling me. He went over all the products that the quiz offered. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I believe the bundle had six to eight products and it was somewhere around $350 to $400 for the bundle. I listened politely, but on my end of the phone, I was scared that my eyes wouldn't roll back forward from the back of my head with how dramatically enthusiastic he was about the quiz's choices for me. I said that I was not interested in paying that kind of money for something I've never tried before, so he offered to send me a few samples of my choice of two of the products that were in the bundle. 
I thought, what the heck? I have nothing to lose if I try them since it was going to be free. I ended up choosing the sleep strips and the energy powder mixes. The powder mixes are like the crystal light packets that you add to water to make it flavored. Joe was ecstatic and I could hear him packaging it up while we were still on the phone and he said he would ship it out that day. A few days went by with Joe texting me multiple times a day asking if I received my samples and if I've tried them yet. Finally, the products came. Joe gave me five samples of each product so that I could give it a healthy try, as he put it. That night, I tried one of the sleep strips and I did end up having better sleep than I typically do as I suffer from insomnia. I decided to not try the energy powder mix that day as well as I did not feel like I needed it. Joe called me later that day to ask what I thought of the products. I told him I was pleasantly surprised by the sleep strip and that I can't wait to try another one tonight. He asked if I tried the energy powder and I told him no. That night, I took the second sleep strip, looking forward to actually being able to get a decent night's sleep like the previous night. Unfortunately, it seemed that the one I took was a dud, so I did not sleep any more than I normally do. But I thought, great, now I have a reason to try the energy powder, and I mixed it into my water bottle for work that day. About half an hour after drinking about half my water with the mix in it, my stomach started to feel upset. I was nauseous, and I had a slight pain under my belly button. I went to the bathroom so I could sit down for a few minutes and do some deep breathing to hopefully calm my stomach issues. Joe texted me a few times while I was on shift asking about my thoughts on the products, but I didn't reply until I was off. I texted him back and told him the bad news that the sleep strip didn't work the second time and the energy powder upset my stomach. Joe was in shock and said that I probably had caffeine before bed and that's why I didn't sleep and that I must have drank the energy powder water mix on an empty stomach. Neither was true. I ended up having my boyfriend try one of each each product, the sleep strip that night and the energy powder the next day. My boyfriend told me that his sleep wasn't any different and that he also got an upset stomach after drinking his water with the energy powder in it. I texted Joe and told him the products didn't work well for me and that I would unfortunately have to decline the opportunity of being an ID life representative. He did not like that and told me to hop on a Zoom call with their company doctor that would explain all the products and how they are completely natural and how those specific ingredients help you in whatever way and how it's better than anything else out there. Yada, yada, yada. Eye rolls galore on my end. I did hop on the Zoom call because again, I have no backbone when it comes to saying no. I didn't have my camera on, but just my name visible on the Zoom call so Joe would see that I was there like I said I would be. I actually actively listened to the doctor for about 15 minutes before he started saying the same things over and over again, just with different phrasing. Then I just left my laptop on, camera off and I went and did my own thing for about an hour and then came back to see if the call was still going on. Shocker, it was. I eventually logged off because I noticed that Joe was no longer on the Zoom call and I called it a day. The following morning, like 6 a.m., I get a call from Joe. I was awake, unfortunately, due to my insomnia, but I decided to let it ring and I would roll over to try and get a little more sleep before I had to get up and ready for the day. Joe left me a voicemail, which I still have, so this will be verbatim. Quote, Hey blank, it's Joe. I just wanted to call and get your thoughts on the Zoom call last night. I know it was a lot of information, so I just wanted to go over any questions you might have. Anyways, it's a beautiful day out. Make sure you get outside and take a walk. You're young now, but getting into healthy habits now will keep you young even when your age doesn't say you are anymore like me. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> also, I just wanted to check in to see if you fixed your issues with the products. Call or text me when you get this. Take care. I'm sorry, quote, I wanted to check in to see if you fixed your issues with the products. That's not good phrasing. I don't love that. That's implying that the products are perfect and that it's you that's the problem. Mm -mm -mm. Nope, really don't like that. That sounds very victim blamey. Oh, your stomach got upset after you drank my product? That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> okay, Joe, okay. The voicemail is a little over a minute, so you can imagine how fast he was talking in it. It freaked me out, honestly that someone had that much energy at 6 a.m. I texted him later and told him that again, this isn't the right fit for me, but I appreciate the opportunity. He then switched and said that I could just tell people about the company and get them into contact with him so that they could give it a try. I told him that since I didn't have a positive experience, I didn't feel right promoting the company. 
He said I must just not have taken them correctly and to use the rest of my samples in the way that he would tell me to and I would instantly fall in love. I declined again as this has been going on for about two weeks at this point. He ignored me again and then repeated himself and said again, I should at least talk about the business so that I could earn a little extra money if people end up contacting him. I played along until he was satisfied and I was able to hang up. Sorry, Joe, but there shouldn't be a right and wrong way to take these products. You know, if you're taking a sleep strip that dissolves on your tongue, you should put it on your tongue, let it dissolve, and it should work. Should it not? If you have a powder that you're supposed to mix with water, doing that should be enough and it should work. This reminds me of like when Monate reps claim that you just didn't shampoo your hair correctly or something. <laughs> It's like, there's only so many ways to do this correctly, okay? And I'm sure there's instructions on the packet or on the box or whatever. This should not be rocket science to take the supplements in the exact correct way or else they're just not gonna be able to work for you at all. That's just so ridiculous. Again, blaming the consumer for a bad reaction to the product, not cool. Not too long after, Joe somehow found out my last name. It's not a common one, unfortunately. And he found me on Facebook and added me. I accepted reluctantly, but thought that it would be cool to have an ex-hockey player of my favorite team as a friend on Facebook to show off to friends and family. Moments later, I was invited to multiple Facebook groups for the company. I hardly ever post on Facebook unless it's my work, so I pretended that I didn't see the invite. But Joe noticed and reached out to tell me to join, and I did. At this point, I'm aware that something isn't right, but again, I wasn't aware of what an MLM was at the time. I started to slowly distance myself from Joe by not replying or making up excuses of why I couldn't talk if he would continue to try to contact me multiple times a day. Eventually, after about two months of me replying less and less, he started getting the idea and not texting or calling me daily or every other day anymore. This was all in May or June of 2022, with it being January of 23 now, and Joe and I are still friends on Facebook, and every once in a while, he still comments on photos of my work or posts on my wall, trying to check in and see if I have time to make extra in Income. I'm also still a part of the Facebook group if you would ever want to sneak into one of their calls or see what types of things they post about for a deep dive, since I've never seen this company covered before. I'm more than willing to help you access any information regarding this company so that you can do what you do best and warn others about this fake opportunity, especially since it's mainly men who are in the company trying to recruit. Thank you for taking the time to read my story and please reach out if you have any questions or if I can help you assist in getting the word out. Who would have thought that me getting the chance to meet a former player player on my favorite hockey team would lead to months of harassment to join an MLM. Always question things if your gut or brain is telling you something is off. Thank you again. I mean, shoot, if you have access to that Facebook group, send it my way. If it's a private Facebook group, then I wouldn't be able to have access to it and you'd have to get more creative with sending me the links for the Zoom calls as they're happening or something. But like I said at the top of your story that I'm all for exposing new and different companies that are not as commonly talked about. I think there is value in doing that. So yeah, we'll have to see if something comes of that. That could be really interesting. And I think your story is unique in the sense that it does kind of have that celebrity component to it in a way. It's not every day that you come in contact with a former player of your favorite sports team ever and you get to interact with him and call him and text him. And it kind of makes you wonder if that little piece of it served to carry this whole thing out longer than it would have otherwise if it was just another client. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I know that if I came in contact with someone who I really looked up to and I thought was super cool, I would probably be more open and willing to interact with them, even if that interaction was a little bit off. And it definitely feels like he was taking advantage of that whole dynamic in this kind of situation. Like, oh, here's this person who's a diehard fan of my team. She's probably going to pick up the phone if I call her. She's probably going to reply if I text her. She's probably going to be more open to having this conversation with me. And she might be more vulnerable to falling for this pitch. That's kind of the way that I'm interpreting this whole situation. But just because he was a professional athlete on an NHL team doesn't mean that he's any less scummy or scammy than all the other MLM bros we see out there. He's still engaging in all these victim blaming and harassment type behaviors, which would be off-putting to anybody. Like at some point, it doesn't really matter how famous or successful or celebrity-like you are. If you're not acting as a decent human being and you're not treating other human beings with respect, that's not gonna get you very far, buddy. Stop calling people, stop texting them, stop harassing them, stop asking them to promote something that they didn't even like and stop blaming them
them that they didn't like it. Anyway, I really appreciate your story. It's a very unique perspective, and I love that we are able to talk about ID life and expose yet another MLM company on this channel. So thank you for that. This one says, hi, Hannah, I've been binging your MLM content lately and wanted to share with you my MLM story for you to share if you would like. Please do not share my name. This is long, so if you want to skip ahead to the beach body stuff, this is the one that had the biggest impact on my life, so please feel free. My first introduction to MLMs was like many others when I was young and had no idea what an MLM was. First, when I was very young, probably five or six, my grandmother did home interiors. I remember going with her to parties she had at other women's houses where she would sell tchotchkes and other home decorating items. She was not financially secure and had a full-time job already in retail, but did direct sales with home interiors to try to make more money. I don't remember there being any pressure to recruit, but just constantly take up nights and weekends for the parties. As I grew up, my mom attended tons of different direct sales parties. And again, I didn't know anything about MLMs. And even when I was in an MLM, I didn't realize these old direct sales companies were MLMs until I really began consuming anti MLM content. I went with my mom to many of these parties from Longer Burger. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Okay, okay, okay. I just Googled it. It looks like it's actually called Longa Burger. Longa Burger. I have never heard of this company ever. It says that this is an American manufacturer and distributor of handcrafted maple wood baskets and other home and lifestyle products. Okay. <laughs> I've learned of so many new companies in this video. This is outrageous. Longa Burger, the woven basket MLM. Should I be surprised? This is insane. Anyway, I went with my mom to many of these parties from Longa Burger, Party Light, Pampered Chef, Premier Jewelry, and Mary Kay. And I'm sure there were others. Most of the direct sales sales parties were just fun times for my mom and her friends to get together and socialize, have some snacks and buy some fun products. I remember feeling most uncomfortable with Mary Kay because I did not like the products, but I always felt obligated to buy things. And even when I was in my twenties, a family member was a director level and told me that she would love to give me a facial and do my makeup. Well, she wasn't a licensed esthetician. And honestly, I felt my makeup looked more natural and appealing than the way that she did her makeup. <laughs> when I was in college, my aunt and a couple cousins began selling Southern living at home. Again, I only saw this as direct sales, not realizing it was an MLM. And after I graduated from law school, I joined to try to make a bit more money when I was building up my law practice and was in substantial student debt because I really loved the products. But all I did was buy stuff for myself with any of the income I made. I did not do Southern living for long, but I did several parties with each one, including perks for the host, usually some sort of added perk if someone at the party agreed to host a party or become a distributor. I never felt comfortable even making those comments. And now when I look back, I realize why it was weird. As an adult, I was constantly being invited to different parties for LuLaRoe, but I told all the girls that I thought the leggings were hideous and I didn't want to participate. <laughs> and paparazzi parties and us born books parties after I had my son. I thought the books were beautiful and I hosted a party a couple of times and then had to buy from anyone who booked a party as part of my party. The distributors were incessantly asking me to join the business since I had a young son who loved the books, but I always turned them down and usually blocked the various distributors because it became very annoying. Looking back now, I realize how overpriced the books are and I just buy from Amazon now. Now comes the part when an MLM really affected my life. I was about a year and a half postpartum, still not back to my pre-baby weight and size and feeling uncomfortable in my own body. A girl I knew from high school had asked me to join her challenge group a couple of times, but I didn't realize that it was something affiliated with an MLM or anything that you would have to pay for. Then a friend from law school started posting all about her Shakeology and the new friends she had made and the weight she had lost. She talked about her challenge group and that was when it all connected. I realized this was Beachbody. I had done some of Sean T's workouts before, but I didn't realize there was a coach aspect to it. I actually reached back out to the high school friend and I joined her challenge group by buying a 21 day fix challenge. I lost about eight pounds in those 21 days and was hooked. I signed up as a coach and went full steam ahead. I became a diamond fairly quickly. Of course, signing up my husband as a coach under me. He was not supportive in the least, but he said, do what I wanted to do. I worked full time, but was constantly on my phone, getting up early and staying up late to make posts. I bought ads. I bought little gifts to mail to my challengers. I increased my Facebook following from about 60 family and close friends to somewhere in the 300s. I was on team calls and trainings and completely drunk on the Kool-Aid. I did all of the challenges that came out. I signed up for Beachbody On Demand 
when it first launched. I even started paying for their early access for coaches. I even went to Summit in Nashville in 2016. This is their big annual conference. I met up with some other coaches on my Uplines team. I bought stuff from the store to give to people as prizes. And I went to all the events, even a few exclusive ones for Diamond coaches or others who had won a success club challenge. I remember being completely in awe of the presenters who were elite Diamond coaches and watching as the top 10 walked across the stage. One thing to note is that year, the top coach was Melanie Mitro, who was the top coach for four years running. But what I think a lot of commentators might not realize is that just because she was the top coach does not mean that she was the top earner. They also announced the only superstar, 15 star diamond, three times over. That was Lindsay Matway. She was one of the very first coaches and not only was she a diamond coach, but she was also a 15 star diamond in three business centers. At the time, she was the only coach who had three business centers reach 15 star diamond level. She is the leader of the bombshell team and most of the top 10 coaches over the past eight years have been under her. And I just have to pause right here because all of this lingo, superstar diamond, 15 star diamond, three business centers, the bombshell team. Like I realize that you're writing this from your own personal perspective and all of these things mean something to you, <laughs> but I just feel the need to point out how ridiculous these titles sound to people who are not inside the MLM. I understand it. I get it. I've seen the compensation plan. I have an idea of what these things mean, but to the average person calling yourself a 15 star diamond, the leader of the bombshell team, like it's just ludicrous. Like it just sounds so over the top ridiculous. It's just comical. The kinds of names that these companies will give people. We are talking about full grown adult women calling themselves elite diamond coaches and things like that. Like it's just so funny to me. And it's one of those things I wonder if MLM reps look back on and kind of giggle about like how funny was that, that we were idolizing people that we called elite diamond coaches and we wanted to be them and we wanted to strive for their position. We wanted to be an elite diamond coach who walked the stage at Summit. <laughs> like, I realize this is coming across as me kind of making fun of all of this, which I sort of am. But more than anything, I just want to make the point that these titles, these ranks, these achievements, they don't mean anything in the grand scheme of life. They don't mean anything to other people who are not inside the MLM itself. And we start going down this slippery slope when we start looking at these people and idolizing them and praising them on stage at annual conferences, because what are you really praising? You're praising someone with a fake made up silly nickname for what? Having the biggest team, recruiting the most people, making the most money. It's just really bizarre from an outsider's perspective. You don't see this happening outside of MLMs. Typically in a professional job setting, there are award ceremonies, there are recognition ceremonies, but it's not based on how many people you were able to manipulate into joining your team. It has nothing to do with how big your paycheck was that year. Usually those kinds of rewards or recognition are given to people who make meaningful impact in the world or at their job or in their workplace. You know, I'm totally derailing us here and I'm sorry for that, but I just can't help but look at these names and read them out loud and not acknowledge how silly all of it sounds. Anyway, back to your story, but she hasn't been a top 10 coach in a very long time and wasn't the year that I went to summit. The top coach in Beachbody is not the one who made the most money. It is based on different criteria and I don't know what the current rules are, but back in 2016, it was the one with the most success club points and probably some other criteria. So while Melanie may have had more folks sign up under her, she was definitely not making more than Lindsay. But what actually was supposed to make me absolutely pumped to do the business and send me back home ready to do whatever it takes made me wake up and realize this whole coaching thing wasn't something for for me. Melanie Mitro's big speech at Summit was all about what she had to do to rise to the top, waking up before everyone in her home to get in her workouts and personal development and work the business, time with kids during the day and doing work in pockets of time, and staying up late after her husband to work the business and do team calls. She said if you don't want to do all of that, then you aren't going to be successful. I realized at Summit that if I wanted to make it in the business, that I would have to sacrifice precious time with my very very young son, my husband, isolate myself from my real friends and family, and honestly become someone I didn't want to be by posting incessantly on social media, sharing entirely too many personal details of my life,
life and also posting what were just two revealing photos of myself. I was never a size zero to two, tiny little flat stomach girl like all the top coaches, and I knew I would never be that. But I also knew I didn't want to do what it took to be at the top in the business by destroying everything else in my life. I came home from Summit and never signed anyone else up under me. I never sold another challenge pack. But Beachbody left me scarred. While I stopped coaching, I still drank Shakeology every day and did the workouts. I never felt that I was good enough, thin enough, etc. I was always trying to lose more weight and more weight, but continued to fail because honestly, my body wasn't made to be that way. I did all of the Autumn Calabrese meal plans and developed an absolutely horrible relationship with food, and I think a bit of body dysmorphia and orthorexia. I was constantly following the top coaches and super trainers on social media and the comparison game and negative self-talk was at an all-time high. I have hypothyroidism and went to my doctor's office and told her that no matter what I did, I couldn't lose weight. I had put on about five of the 15 pounds I had lost with Beachbody, which honestly was probably muscle from the 80-day obsession. And even if I ate perfectly and I worked out super hard, nothing worked. So she changed my thyroid dosage. I went into hyperthyroidism, started having heart palpitations and hot sweats, shaking, etc. About this time, I had quit Shakeology. When I finally went to an endocrinologist, she told me that my dosage should have never been changed. I realized how I let trying to be like the tiny little top coaches and super trainers and completely be brainwashed by diet culture, beach body culture, MLMs, etc. affect my health and it was all lies. During the past few years, I've worked with a nutritionist, started using a very good streaming workout service that is not affiliated with MLMs at all and doesn't give meal plans by non-nutritionists. And that led me to finding anti-MLM material by searching, quote, beach body seriously messed me up. I truly believe that while I've been in and out of diet culture for the past 20 years, my time with Beachbody was the most damaging. I 100% still struggle to be content with my weight even though I eat very healthy and work out consistently, but I no longer feel like food controls me. I do not follow any Beachbody coaches or super trainers and I refuse to ever do their workouts again. I actually pretty much quit social media entirely. I also recognize how trying to be the perfect cookie cutter coach led me to much of the issues I've had. Learning from anti-MLM creators has made me sincerely regret my six months of coaching and all the things I did just like you show in the power hour call videos. And I am completely anti MLM now. Yeah. So I'll link a video below of a Beachbody power hour zoom call that was hosted that I got access to. And in that video, we watched it and we paused it every so often to debunk the craziness, basically very eye opening regarding the inner workings of Beachbody teams. So even those direct sales type MLMs that seem to be more product-based are on the do not buy from ever again list because of all that goes on in an MLM. I hope this email helps someone else who has struggled to understand how MLMs and Beachbody in particular can really mess up your perspective and to heal as me watching other anti-MLM folks share their stories helped me. That's pretty interesting that your attendance at their annual conference called Summit was actually the thing that made you realize, ooh, this is not good. (laughs) I don't want to do this. I don't want to be like this. When in theory, that's the kind of event that's supposed to like pump you up and motivate you the most. But kind of like I was saying previously, like it feels weird to idolize these people and to have them get up on stage and report that in order to be successful and to be like me, you have to give up all of these really important things in your life. And you're supposed to be getting time freedom out of this opportunity, but also you're gonna be expected to wake up earlier, be distracted all day long in the pockets of your day, and then also be staying up later to do these team calls and things like that. I can see how something like that is intended to be really motivational, like if you work hard and you grind for it, then you're going to be as successful as me. But what I don't think people at the top of MLMs understand sometimes is that not everybody wants that kind of lifestyle. Not everybody wants to be like working 24 seven and driving themselves into the ground and burning themselves out. It doesn't sound appealing. So I think it's interesting that you recall this moment as being the one that kind of set you off as like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not really into this whole thing. I know what you're saying is supposed to be motivational, but it's having the exact opposite impact on me. And I also appreciate your perspective on kind of the toxic diet culture of Beachbody specifically. I've talked about it in previous videos before, but it seems like people who join Beachbody to become a Beachbody coach, as they're called, it seems like they're just constantly on a diet or they're constantly doing a workout program. And as soon as one program finishes, the next one starts and you are just constantly 
pounding yourself into the ground, trying to shrink yourself. Because again, another component of Beachbody and its promotion is that these coaches are going out there on social media, posting photos of themselves in bikinis or sports bras and shorts or whatever. And a lot of times these photos are before and after progress photos where you take a picture before you start the program and a picture afterwards. And it's like you're under this constant pressure to be shrinking, shrinking, shrinking and having more and more results. And you're supposed to be a product of the product and prove that doing this 80 day obsession program or this 21 day fix program is going to help you lose weight or gain muscle or whatever, but you're doing the programs back to back to back to back to back. So like, I don't know, that just seems really unhealthy to me. And I'm all for an active and healthy and fit lifestyle, whatever. I love to work out. I work out multiple days a week. I don't necessarily do it for physique reasons, but I understand the appeal. I understand why people like to have that a part of their daily routine, but there's just that extra added pressure when you are selling that lifestyle, when you're selling that product and a big part of your job. And the reason that you're working out so hard is because you want to have these results to post on social media. And it always just comes across to me that that can't be healthy, right? You're doing the exercise programs and the meal plans kind of for the wrong reasons. It doesn't feel like you're doing those to become healthy or to become the best version of yourself or whatever. And there's no shame in doing those things if you're doing them under the direction of a professional, like if you have some kind of fitness goal that you're utilizing an actual licensed coach for, that's great, go for it, you do you. But it doesn't feel like that's what Beachbody coaches are doing. It feels like they've got a product to sell and in order to sell that product, they just constantly have to be shrinking themselves. They're not doing it for health reasons, they're doing it for sales tactics. And that's the part that does not feel good to me. I think that we should be looking at that with a very critical eye. So I appreciate you sending in this story because it does help give that perspective to people who might be considering joining Beachbody and becoming a Beachbody coach that it's not all it's cracked up to be. And this is going to be a lot of extra work in a way that even other MLMs aren't. It's not just about posting a graphic or promoting this miracle pill or promoting these essential oils or whatever. It really does feel like a complete lifestyle overhaul that you're undertaking that now you're like completely changing the way that you eat and the way that you exercise. And it's just, I don't know, all of it feels really gross to me, but thank you for sending in this story to kind of bring that aspect of it to light. And with that, my friends, it's everything I have for you for this MLM horror stories video. I say it at the beginning and I say it again here that if you have your own story, please send it my way. I'm always on the hunt for new and interesting and unique horror stories for this series. The instructions for how to do that are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.